Visionary here from Drake Wing Gamers. If you know me on Twitter, the Gaming Dragon. Today I'm coming back at you another Let's Play episode of Changeling Tale, Marion's Path. So let's go ahead and pick right back up where we left off, guys. Please sit back and enjoy for the next 18 minutes and let's jump right in. Alarm Chan, you're up and let's go. Okay. <clears throat> when man and I are together alone, we're a team without rival. The world we've built in, a, in, a, in private is a safe one. One where our troubles are discussed and handled with friendship and support. Well, beyond the boundaries of our homestead, though, that's a world in which I do not, of which we do not speak. I know we're sheltered here, especially Marion, but should that imaginary wall ever be breached? What if she went into town or a stranger showed up on her doorstep? Would all that safety go away? No, I don't think you're a recluse. I just, well, I do worry that you're missing out on a world outside these highlands. I know others miss you, same as before. I know. It goes unsaid. We also both know that a skirt and a shawl disguise won't exactly pass muster anymore. I'm not sure even Lady Esther's all-purpose long-lasting face powder is up to the task. Still, it had been several months since her last trip into town, and even longer since the incident at the picnic with Flory. I want that embarrassment to be water under the bridge. The longer Marion stays cooped up at home, I worry that she'll be less and less likely to venture back out into the world. I know it gnaws at her, as well. She's made it clear that she misses the adventure of, a, of marketing, and the warmth of the church congregation. Warmth. Come to think of it, as windy as it's been today, wearing a nice big scarf wouldn't be out of the question. If I stay by her side like before, perhaps she'd be willing to go into town. But is it worth the risk of disrupting the safety she's built here? Is that something she wants? Oh, big choice, big choice, big choice. Okay, we'll save it right here. Okay, offer to stroll through town. Marion. She's lost in thought. I tap her shoulder to have her turn to me. The bond, the one that is formed between us, it's unbreakable. I make sure she understands that I am being sincere. You know, the marketplace is still up and running. It should be winding down, too. It won't be too busy. You mean... I care to go for a ride into town today. I'll be right by your side. You can even pick out any of the any hats you like for me. I can tell she's mulling it over, even if she shakes her head. <coughs> goodness, 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 goodness. No, must be. Sorry about that, guys. I... I can't... like this? N no I shouldn't! If you don't want to go, that's your decision. But despite anything that may or may not happen in town, Marion, my opinion of you will never change. Neither will Grants, nor Graces, nor Lana's. I wink. And I would bet money that Bulgaria will always have your back, too. Marion cracks a smile. That's quite a team on my side. What more would you need? What more could you need? She grins even wider. Well... I could do with some more equipment and a bigger vat for cheese making. All right, I'll do it. <laughs> All right, let's go into town and uh, get gawked at by people. Ooh. We ride atop Hazel's cart into town, continuing our day of irresponsibility, but not before washing the dishes and baking some honey wheat loaves for Bulgare. Marion's definition of irresponsibility is, isn't quite as carefree as my own. She wears her traditional disguise, this time including face powder, mittens, and a scarf for good measure. It's an odd ensemble for summer, but not out of the question given the wind. It's not like our last clandestine trip to town, though. Well, she may be afraid of being found out, she's no longer afraid of who she is. There's an air of sober confidence about Marion, which buoys my own. <clears throat> Between the layers of her disguise, I can see the tinkle in her eyes we pass by familiar faces and old haunts. At the church, a few parishioners are gathered by the entrance. Oh, it must be the Women's Guild. I can see Gemma. Would you like to stop and say hello? No, no, let's keep going. We move on, but my eyes linger, seeing the group in front of the church. Oh! Oh well, my, what a piece of art! An image of our nuptials passed through my mind. Marion holding a bouquet. Bouquet, me in my nicest suit, and Grand sniffing, in, Grand sniffing into her tissue. Second, who's that cow wife? <laughs> my goodness, my goodness, my goodness. Perhaps Marion nibbling on the bouquet just a little. I laugh. Oh, I hope that image becomes a reality. If not soon, someday. What's so funny? Just picturing the looks on the parishioners' faces if they knew our little secret. It would be. That'd be the biggest scandal in town! At least until Bulgare gets that neon sign he's been dreaming of! And Mary's cow. 
I turn my head and give Marion a smile. She leans into my shoulder and I flip the reins to get Hazel moving. Our first stop is the stag and nanny to drop off the warm bread. <laughs> my, kind of big there, aren't you? Yeah, are you ready? She looks... Actually, yeah, she looks pretty passable. Ready. <laughs> Girl, how are you gonna drink beer? She, yeah, she does. Yeah, she does. She does like to. She does like to partake. The place is thankfully nearly empty. With noon fast approaching, most of the market goers must already be on their way home. Do my eyes deceive me? Is that lovely Miss Marion McLeod? Marion blushes but accepts his embrace. I notice a bit of her powder left behind on his shoulder. Welcome, lass. Take off those warm woolens and make yourself comfortable. Ah, uh, well, it's a bit blustery, Alton. Out of nowhere. Out of nowhere, a broom wallops the old man in the head. Oh, Gare, you never comment on a lazy lady's fashion choices. <laughs> Little sis to the rescue. Grace appears holding a broom and dustpan. She sets them aside, and to my surprise, comes over to hug her sister as well as as well as as well. I hear her whisper, "I'm so happy you came to visit." So, what'll it be, Marion? A pint or two? Oh no, I just came to deliver these loaves. You gotta visit Bulgaria, not sharing a pint. Grace said you've been under the weather, but heavens, Marion, have you lost your head? Well, maybe I can. Just one. Uh oh, I'm worried what's gonna happen here. Oh! The four of us gather around a table and indulge in a round of fresh bread and dark ale. Marion's attempts to nibble and sip from under her shawl are less than discreet. Is everything alright, lass? turns herself away just enough to hide her munching muzzle, but I worry Bulgaria thinks she's giving him the cold shoulder. I'm sure she just doesn't want us to catch her, whatever she has. Isn't that right, sis? Garbled mm hmm tumbles out from under from out from behind Marion's scarf, along with a few breadcrumbs. The, to change the subject, I gra ask Grace how she likes her new job. I can't say it's a dream, but Bulgaria lets me keep all the things I find on the ground. Last week I found one shilling sixpence, a brass ring, and a wooden eye. Hey, I couldn't keep the place tidy without you. Who would polish off the unfinished drinks? <laughs> we stay in chat until Bulgaria spots a new pair of willing listeners and says our and says our goodbyes. I'll see you soon, Marion. You know the heifer parade is coming up fast. The costume of yours is a shoe in. He winks conspiratorially. Soon, Bulgaria, I promise. Yeah, that that a costume she's wearing. Yeah, oh man, she'll she'll win. Uh, she'll win first place for sure. It's a contest. The rest of our excursion reminds me of my first day back in town, though. Though, my, how life has changed. We stock up on cheesecloth and rind wax, while enjoying samples of gooseberry jam and smoked Dunlop. Hmm, my Dunlop is much better. You know, you can start your own business. Build some healthy competition. Marion laughs, but I sense her mind at work. We pick out a larger trowel for skimming cream and take it to the cart. Next, we move on to the Milner, where I hold up my end of the bargain. You gotta pick, Marion. What'll it be? A lady's choice. If you're fixing to find the best bonnet for your gu for your guideman, might I suggest the Balmoral? Oh, he's not my. Maybe we'll be back for a Balmoral another day, sir, for a more formal occasion. Even under all her layers and her fur, I can tell Marion is blushing. Aha! Uh -huh. She's a she selected a tweed towering cap for me. It's a jaunty hat. It's a jaunty hat. When I know I'll be happy to wear many a day, I hand Murdoch some coin and doff my brand new cap. Do you like it? Of course, you have impeccable taste. Excellent. Now I don't suppose I get to pick out an accessory for you too. Perhaps a matching cowbell charm? Her breath catches momentarily in my throat. Oh no, I think you wear it much better than I ever could. She chuckles at my joke, thankfully, while I keep an eye out for Effie, who is nowhere in sight. That girl is such an anomaly, nothing predictable about her. Lass, uh, perhaps it's for the best that we don't run into her at all. Ever. Marion seems to leave that no one else pays her much mind other than a genial me genial greeting. The looks that stall owners give me, I get the sense they're concerned for Marion. Perhaps they think it wise not to inquire as to her rumored illness. I would agree. One more stop, Malcolm. Then we should get going. I think Hazel's had her fill. She points to my mare, who know 
who gnaws at her bit and le at her bit and led by the hitching post. Let's grab the poor girl a treat. Rain selects three plump carrots and fills the bag with Anise candies for herself. We then make our way back to back to save Hazel. Did you miss us? As much as we've loaded up her cart, I doubt it. Ha! <laughs> of course Hazel missed us. Just look at that sweet bonny face. That sweet bonny face is drooling everywhere as she crushes the carrot between her jaws. I can hardly turn away from the spectacle, that is, until I hear a small voice behind us. Miss Marion, I, I have a tail just like you. Oh god, Marion gasps and stumbles into me. F Flory, whatever do you mean? Look at me, I'm a lovely cow lady. Oh god, the tiny girl, the tiny girl flips a long twist of black licorice behind her, giggles, then bites into her own candy tail. Such a yummy tail. Well, don't bite on her tail. She keeps laughing, and I am shocked as Marion's reaction. She bends down to pet young Flory's head. You're the cutest cow in all the Highlands, Flory. Oh. No, Miss Marion, that's you. Oh. She hugs Marion and takes off, scurrying down the road, mooing. Plant a kiss upon Marion's kerchief. For your bravery today and every day. She looks left and right, then in one swift movement. Smooch. Quickly pulls out her scarf to give me a kiss in return. Your kindness today and every day. <laughs> I love it! Well, Tom and Marion is excited to try out the new cheese making equipment. Together we have the new vat into place beside the old one. Look, Malcolm, this new trowel is so big! It does make the old one look tiny by comparison. Are you sure the old gals in the field will be up to the task of filling it up? Positive. I've never seen them giving so much milk. Marion and the cows might be up to the challenge, but the prospect of hefting countless more buckets of milk has me daunted. Come on, let's empty the curds from this vat so we can set up the new one. Oh my! Marion feeds the blocks which we cheddared this morning into the cheese mill and I rotate it, seamless, seemingly endlessly. Then we pour scoops of curds into molds lined with cloth. Ah, man, I'm torn between this one and the other. They're such good ones. Man. Good lord, girl. You got some big fat udders. <laughs> she twists the cloth and I can see her struggling with her hooves to properly tighten and squeeze the way from the, well, from the bundle. <laughs> it's a it's ghost. <laughs> it's a movie ghost. Oh, my God. I come up behind her and she huffs and grunts. Huh. I guess I'm still getting used to these. She sets down the curds and I place my, tool, my stool directly behind hers. I glide my palms along her damp bare arms, admiring the softness of her fur and the deft movement of her strong forearms and hooves. You're stronger than me in so many ways, Marion. Oh. Placing my hands near her wrists, I'm able to guide her actions. Does that feel okay? It does. It's helping. The curds respond to her slightest efforts. Way slips out through the cheesecloth between our digits and we twist and squeeze. Oh my. Oh my god, the look on- Oh god, that look! Somehow my stool slides nearer to hers until my hips are adjacent to her tail. It swings back and forth with the rhythm of our work. The tension is building between us that is tighter than the walls of the hickory molds. Curiously, she tilts her head back toward me and her muzzle brushes against my face. I lean into her, kissing her snout gently, and moving down to kiss the nape of her neck. It feels so plush against my lips. I'm losing myself and my inhibitions in the moment, and I sense that Marion is too. The way is heady, is heady and slick, splattering us with each ring of the cheesecloth. My hands start to squeeze hers more tightly, and she lets out a low moan, less than less of pain than pleasure. Wait, what's going on with his hands? Well, uh, that one looks a little odd. Yeah. What's going on with your hand, buddy? Uh, it's a little weird. It's probably just the positioning of his fingers. Yeah, I can, I can... Yeah, I, I can kind of match. Yeah, okay, I can match that. Okay. Ryan lowers her chin, searching for my lips, and we connect. Her lips part, and our kiss becomes deeper, more passionate with each passing breath. My hip is pressed so firmly to hers now it aches. Beneath my own tightening grip, Marion's hooves are squeezing the cheesecloth harder and harder. Oh my! Cards tumble out of the broken cloth, spattering way everywhere, breaking the spell between us. We both double over, laughing. 
Oh, Malcolm, what a mess! Don't fret, Miss Marion. No sense crying over spilt milk. <laughs> oh my god. We washed up from the cheese making and spent the rest of the day doing our chores in good cheer. I sense something changed between us, though. A new dynamic. I leave it unsaid, but I wonder if Marion feels it too. Time passes quickly, and we seem to only get half the work done that we want to. Before long, the sun has dipped below the horizon. Our bellies are full, and it's time to bid Marion a good evening. Uh... Huh. In our bedroom, I light some candles and pour, each, and pour us each a glass of cold water from the pitcher. This is our new nightly routine. Darkness permeates the room, and the scent of tallow wax surrounds me. Oh, what a cute outfit. Like an apparition, Marion emerges in her long, sheer nightgown. I have to remind myself that the vision is all too real. She curtsies shyly, and the two of us squeeze onto the small bed. Let me see how far along we are. What are you- Oh, God, this has so many, many, many good pictures to use as thumbnails. Damn it! Okay. Oh, it's so wonderful. We curl up together. We rest our heads. This time feels different. The energy in the room is heightened. The day may have been simple, but it brought us to, but it brought us that much just that much closer. I usually stay until she drifts to sleep, at which time I tiptoe out and head home. As I hold her in bed, there's no part of me that wants to say goodbye to her tonight. An anxiety in me builds every time we separate, but I also don't want to stifle her with my presence. It has been a busy day, but every but every day is busy. Oh, as if my, it's as if Marion senses my apprehension, or perhaps even feels it herself. She whispers in my ear, "It's free real estate." It's so late, Malcolm. Why don't you just stay here tonight? A shiver goes through me. My body goes cold, like it's been tossed into an ice bath. Here tonight with her. Frozen by the choice, does she mean that I? Does she mean what I think she means? That can't be. Could it? We know how attracted that we are to each other, but ever since that difficult day under the under the alders, I wasn't sure when or if she would feel comfortable enough to be that close physically to me again. Plus, what would that mean for us as a couple? I remind myself that we've already committed to each other, even touched upon marriage, but Marion is so dear, so special, so different than any woman I could have ever fallen for. Please, don't think I'm being forward, but I want this night to be for us, Malcolm. I love you, and... Um... She holds my hand against her very, very full chest. So many impure thoughts are racing around, and she's saying what I think she is. Malcolm, you're already married to my heart. Oh my. She kisses me along my ear, moving her mouth towards my lips. As we inch our hips closer together on the bed, I am near breathless with anticipation. <coughs> Don't worry, Grace is working tonight. Please, stay with me. <laughs> oh, it looks like we finally hit it. Oh, I've got some content to get through when I'm not recording. <laughs> Alright, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, when I get to that past the transition, I'm gonna pause the video. Oh my! Oh my, what a night y'all have had. Alright, I'm gonna pause it right there. Thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, ring that notification bell, leave a super thanks or a tip if you can. It always helps. Until the next video, I love you all. I'll see you next time. Bye bye!